You know, if they'd arc the arrows, they'd be able to penetrate their armor. What the f Hello and welcome back to yet another science video. Okay, so yes, I've heard people say stuff like this, and now let's talk about what's wrong with this idea. And maybe along the way you'll learn a little bit about physics. Okay, so there's a very high chance that in your basic science classes you learned that objects fall in parabolas, or these shapes. Now, this isn't technically true if you really want to start looking at motion on a planetary scale, but that's really not important when we're talking about bows and arrows. So let's just keep it simple and say that these arrows are moving in parabolas. And to simplify it even more, let's just say we're using the same arrow and the same bow for every shot. So that means that the arrow is going to be fired at the same speed regardless of which way the bow is pointed. For reference, English longbows, which required more than 100 pounds of force to draw, can fire an arrow up to about 130 miles per hour. So let's just say that this is V1 or V initial. This is the speed that the arrow will leave the bow at. Now because we're assuming that we're using an identical arrow for every shot, there's only one thing that really matters, and that's the speed. And obviously, a faster arrow is going to do more damage and penetrate deeper. So instead of calculating penetration, we just want to find the fastest arrow possible. <coughs> now for this first example, let's just pretend there isn't air resistance to make everything even simpler. Situations like this are the whole point of having physics. We just fill in several variables and we can accurately predict a lot of stuff with relatively simple math. But now let's get into the meat of this problem. So you are standing here at the same level as your opponent who is standing over here. Now you fire an arrow at your opponent. As we said earlier, the arrow starts out going about 130 miles per hour, or V1. Now, what speed do you think it's going to be going when it hits the opponent? Well, I can guarantee that it hits them at V1. Notice that I didn't even consider the path of the arrow because it just isn't important. The great thing about parabolic motion is that as you go up the path, the speed goes down, and as you go down the path, the speed goes up. So as long as there's no forces like air resistance, it's just gravity, two points at the same elevation will always have the same speed. This means that because your opponent is at the same elevation as you, he will always be hit by an arrow moving as fast as it was fired. Now theoretically, there's two paths that this arrow could take, a direct path and an indirect path. The direct path is the flattest trajectory. However, it is still a parabola. And the indirect path is an arcing trajectory that falls down onto the target. So I understand why at first glance the arcing trajectory looks better. Intuitively, we think that falling makes something faster or it gives it more energy, and this is sort of true. <coughs> However, when we consider the physics of the situation, we realize it takes energy to get the arrow up high. And when it falls, it's just gaining that energy back. So there was no real net increase in energy. So in theory, neither of these paths is going to be any better because they're hitting with the same velocity. However, in practice, this isn't the case. Firstly, in the real world, there is air resistance, which is constantly taking energy away from the arrow. So the longer the arrow is in the air, the more energy it ends up losing. Because the arcing trajectory takes longer, it will end up losing more energy, and it actually ends up being weaker than the flat trajectory. This is the opposite of what some people expect to happen. The longer duration of the path also creates other problems. An obvious one is that it's harder to hit a moving target because you have to aim even further ahead of them, and they have even more time to see your arrow and just move out of the way. There's also the fact that you're not trying to hit a uniform target, you're trying to hit a person. The flat trajectory is coming right at the chest of the enemy, meaning that there's a relatively large target. But the arcing trajectory is coming from a higher angle, meaning that there's a smaller target. Also, if you start to consider armor, hitting from above is even worse. Even the weakest of soldiers will have a helmet. So if you're coming down from above, about half of your target is now covered by a piece of steel. And it's unlikely that any arrow is going to penetrate a steel helmet, especially one that's now moving slower because of air resistance. Also, even if the enemy is just wearing a gambeson, which is basically a thick coat, that still gives their shoulders protection. It's been demonstrated that gambeson can stop an arrow even though it's just a soft armor. And again, with your slower arrow, you're even less likely to penetrate that gambeson. The gambeson is still a problem for the direct trajectory, but that arrow is moving faster so it has a higher chance of penetrating, and they also have the chance of hitting the legs which tend to be less armored. 
So in almost every situation, the arcing trajectory is actually going to be worse. The only time it's really useful is when there's an obstacle that prevents a direct shot or your own troops are in the way. Also, before you ask about shooting someone on a different level, the same logic still applies. If you start higher up, the arrow will gain energy, meaning it hits harder. If you're lower, the arrow will lose energy traveling up to the enemy and hit softer. In both cases, the final impact energy isn't really determined by the path of the arrow, just the initial conditions. Now obviously, there's a lot more to archery combat, but that's where I'm going to wrap up this week's video. I know that this isn't really a common topic for my channel, I tend to talk more about space, but I hope that it was still interesting and that you learned a little bit about the physics of falling objects. But anyway, I'm Conhathi, and I'll see you next week.